Hello, everyone. Hi. Welcome to yet another episode. Again. Of we a don't, podcast don't, about crisps. Yes, we don't know what order this is in because we're going to freewheel it. Yeah. Um, Inception crisps. Um, but thank you for your support so far. If yeah. you have support. If there has been any. Um, <laughs> a lot of people are telling me that this is a really bad idea. Oh, yeah, yeah. I've had no positive reinforcement <laughs> whatsoever. No, no, no. I'm really beginning to doubt myself. <laughs> I think it's a, it's a passion project, though, isn't it? <laughs> This may be the last one we record. Maybe. I hope not. Who knows? Who yeah. knows? Maybe maybe if we do a series two, we just don't record it. Yeah, uh, yeah we just meet up. <laughs> just have some crisps. Not every friendship has to be monetized. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, today's episode, we've got, I think, some of the best crisps. Oh, around. big hitters. They yeah. are big hitters. They're the type of crisps that if you see them you gotta get them oh they're so good and you, they're rare though they're not com- they're not they're, they're not rare but they're not everywhere they're, they're not in your face they're that good you rob them almost <laughs> oh, yeah <laughs> yeah so before the, we started recording i realized we didn't have any crisps which was a big format point really of the podcast so we well went- you say that <laughs> <laughs> it's the hook it gets yeah, people yeah, in yeah, yeah. um and so we uh, went to the shop and I forgot to buy the crisps and just what just what's out so casual it was it was a work of art it's like the uh, the the bank job have you seen that uh, no no well all the old people just got get in the uh, hat and garden oh yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. It's just it was just it was just confidence I think it was more stylish I think it was oh like it was so oceans like, fourteen <laughs> catch me if you can it was like I'm dressed as a pilot yeah, yeah. I'm the crisp guy <laughs> dressed as a crisp guy I'm the crisp guy. <laughs> Yeah, so we got some Seabrooks. What um what are your thoughts on Seabrooks? Oh well first of they're amazing. They have the obviously the ridge, but they're not as heavy as a McCoy. Yeah, they're a light so crisp. They're a lighter crisp. You can do two in one go. Two McCoys in a go. It's I always compare them to McCoys. Um McCoys are seen as it's proper dominant yeah. alpha sort of mill wall. <laughs> These are more of like a hipster crisp. Seabrook. Maybe. I fit yeah, but they I don't like them for that. Right. I don't think they're trying to be. I think hipsters like them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but they're not alpha. No. I mean, they're more of a lighter. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're more of a, like a, a sidekick, Chris. Yeah, yeah. They're fucking good, man. I love the logo. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it'd make a good shirt sponsor, actually. Oh, it See, would make but, a good shirt. For a coastal sponsor. team. Yeah, yeah. You're Bournemouth. You're Southampton. Brighton. You're Brighton. Oh. You're Blackpool. Yeah. <laughs> they're, a, they're Blackpool all day. Oh, but so you broke Blackpool. <laughs> Come yeah. on, mate. No, actually, Bournemouth. Because they've already got David Brooks, and then you can be like, "Did you see Brooks?" And see, this is the quality you're getting. <laughs> Marketing guru. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, nice variation of flavors. They've got a great prawn cocktail. Because I, I sometimes compare flavors of crisp. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I might prefer Walker's cheese and onion to other brands of cheese and onion, but I prefer a. Seabrook prawn cocktail to a yeah, Walker's prawn that. cocktail. Do you I, mean? Have you ever had the Seabrook Canadian ham? Oh, Canadian ham? ham's great. Oh, I, I like the balls that they've called it Canadian ham. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. just smoky bacon. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but it's better than smoky bacon. Yeah, because it's Canadian ham. Yeah, do you know, I'd never go for smoky bacon, really. No. I'd rarely go for it. And but I'd, I'd rarely, go for Canadian ham. I'd go for Canadian ham. <laughs> Fuck no. Oh, my dickhead here. What? I was going to go for Canadian ham. It's Canadian. <laughs> it's foreign. It's uh, it's exciting. Oh, it's fucking so exciting. <laughs> you know what I really like, right, about foreign people is, um, you know when you meet a European person and instead of saying yes, they go, of course. Oh, yeah. If you're in a restaurant, they go, of course. Yeah, I, I like it. Or, 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 or if instead of saying no, they go, it's not possible. It's not possible. It's such good... <laughs> English. Oh, they're great. At, they're great at the second language. Do you yeah, know? Yeah. And and then we turn our nose up. Go, <laughs> got a fella before me, a uh, Spanish lad. He was in a he was in Pret a Manger. He had a he, he ordered a, a cappuccino and cheese on ham toast. Ham, <laughs> ham. <laughs> yeah, you can try and go to Madrid, <laughs> and you're like, oh, that one. Canadian ham bun, please, mate. <laughs> Canadian ham bun. Um. Yeah, they. they uh, I think it's, it's ingrained in them early, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They learn. We've got a great language, all us. They learn about English, and we learn about crisps. <laughs> yeah, we learn how to point at menus. <laughs> Do you reckon we'll ever get crisps on the curriculum? That's. I mean, that is a long-term goal. <laughs> <laughs> <Crisp> etiquette. <laughs> I'd have done that at GCSE. Yeah, multiple choice. Uh, oh, odd one out. 
Um, in the in a pub scenario, which one of these crisps is is okay to eat on your own? Yeah, Monster Munch. Right. A A Monster Munch. B Scampy Fries. <laughs> C Seabrook. <laughs> D Walkers. <laughs> I mean, as all of our regular listeners will <laughs> know, it is Scampy Fries, of course. Exactly. But the do there is an issue with Seabrook. I'm not. This isn't a puff piece just for Seabrook. They're mm. not paying us. And even if they were, I'd be honest. Seabrook, apart from today. Normally, have very small packets. Today is quite a big packet, and I was surprised at how big the packet was. But normally, there are a lot smaller bags than that, it's especially in bag. pubs. Yeah, this is a big grab bag. Yeah, that's a... But normally, in pubs especially, you get quite small packets. I think it adds to their raison d'etre. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hope this is out of order. <laughs> no, the I, raison d'etre, I think it's going to be in order. I, I, uh, I think it adds to their image and their charm right okay i think that you you introduce them very early in your life yes I, I, do you know joe it's what it's one of it's one of the first like out of walkers crisps Is that, oh. yeah 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 yeah. i yeah, know what you it, mean yeah yeah it's when you it's when you go from happy meals to getting a normal meal at mac is like oh yeah. fuck i'm a big boy <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I don't even want i don't even miss the toy yeah do you know what i mean it's yeah, like it's yeah, like yeah, it's yeah. like right you're nine now. Yeah. You can have Seabrook. I went, oh, can you have Dad Crisp? <laughs> Mick, do you reckon, can you eat them all? Yeah. Oh, it's far for good, isn't it? And yeah. Oh, like, yeah. Oh, they've got bridges and that. I th- I actually think, my, my first memory of Seabrook is certainly eating them in a pub. I think they may have been my first ever pub crisps, Seabrook. Mm, I, they, I associate them a lot with swimming, me. Oh, they, yeah, they are a good swimming. They're quite yeah. light. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, mine, mine's a quaver. Oh, quaver. quaver's perfect, yeah. yeah. Quaver's a good shout. Yeah. But it's not just all crisps today. No. As Because we thought Seabrook. What, what goes well with Seabrook? The, 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 the sea. The sea. The water. Ocean, water. It, when it rain, it can rain and flood uh, places. Yeah, so we yeah, went for yeah. festivals. Festivals, obviously. Music festivals. Music fests. <laughs> Seabrook. Um, C is a note in music as well. Yes. Um, Brooke. Brooke. There must be a, a musician. Some at Brookfield. Brooke Shields Brooke. is an actor, but probably out of sang once. Could probably sing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> Raise on death. Hand and glove. What are your thoughts on festivals? I don't like them. Right. Don't like live music, really. Okay. Um, I'm just... The thing is, what you, one thing you think about me when you first see me, you think sex he, on legs. He likes toilets. <laughs> <laughs> I love a good toilet, man. Yeah, yeah, I absolutely adore them. Yeah, <laughs> no, I, I uh, had a sit down the other day. Uh, and I sent on the toilet. It, yeah, and I sent yeah. it selfie to my girlfriend. Yeah, something we do. Um, makes the makes the hours flick by. <laughs> And I um, said, are you having a shit again? I went, no, I'll just come for a sit down. Right. So, but you just, where what? Well, I, was, I was on my recliner chair. Yeah, yeah. But it's just a good thinking spot, do you know what I mean? <laughs> right. Even not, not needing the toilet. I was like, I'm going to fucking... See, I, I the, love it, man. I've heard of parents doing that to get away from kids, but not... You know, oh, just, yeah, to escape my own thoughts. Yeah, just to escape... The, the other room yeah just to escape just like I need a change of scenery because I'm off during the day yeah, yeah obviously and you know instead of writing <laughs> I'll create, go pretend to have a shit creating content yeah. I just when you need a break from pretending to write you pretend <laughs> to have a shit yeah so I just thought I'll just go in here for a think yeah and I then later lo- pretend to have a shower so I absolutely love thinking right okay I love thought do you know the, that doesn't so, come across. So, <laughs> sounds weird, right? You know the voice in your head? Yeah. The internal monologue? Yeah. I think he's one of my best friends. <laughs> okay. I absolutely, I'm just such a laugh of him. <laughs> he just gets me. Yeah, you know, I, he just gets me. We was, just clicked. I was in the pub on Saturday and there's a bit of a queue at the bar and um, I just thought like, I'll just drift off and play conversation with myself so I was just like imagining something it's yeah. actually visualising coming out to my gig and going it, like yeah. getting a good reaction I always positive visualise when I have a gig and I was just laughing to myself at something I'd say to a, a potential heckle right okay so just stupid just yeah. going off someone saying something like me putting them down or whatever and just like ah, well. and the girl behind the bar because I was doing this side on 
the girl behind the bar was like, I've just been watching, can I just say, I've just been watching you for the last 30 seconds. And we've all been pissing ourselves. <laughs> she was a fan of the podcast, and she went, I, I knew you, you from podcasts, so I kind of know, yeah, yeah. like you do this kind of thing, but it's great <laughs> to just see it in live. <laughs> I'm holding the bar up, just going, yeah, it will be 1 0. Nah. <laughs> you know I, mean? I, think, I think that's completely understandable, right? I think, and a lot of people will disagree with this and probably disagree with the comments. In my head, I'm the funniest person in the world, right? And and that, I'm not saying that everyone should think that, mm. but because I've got the exact same sense of humour as me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I laugh at what I say all the time because I think it's funny. I know, I don't, I don't understand this, um, uh, that being a criticism. You're like, oh, yeah, he thinks he's well funny. Yeah, well, yeah. Well, sure, Good, you should, everyone should. Doesn't everyone? Yeah, everyone That's should I mean. think they're the best yeah, at yeah, everything because yeah. it's exactly... Oh, don't think I'm the best at everything. No, but yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a bold shout. But yeah, everyone should think they're funny. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. they've got the exact same. Or, or think, think they're right. Kind, or yeah, yeah, or think their morals are the best. No one thinks they're immoral. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone thinks they're creative as well. Yeah, yeah. Do you yeah, know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm a bit creative. Yeah, yeah. But as we've seen, we're not. <laughs> no, we're not. <laughs> not. Um. So yeah, the 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 point with festivals is it's a bit too busy and mm. packed and I don't like the sleeping situation and I mean I say that as a man who stands on a broken bed for <laughs> months but um, I, also as a man who's been out for three days and not slept oh well, yeah <laughs> which I've is slept, very common I've festival. slept on the floor yeah. slept on, on the streets um, but uh, yeah I just find it too packed and it's not as good as listening they, to your headphones it can be I'll be honest I love music festivals and I like music, but I don't go to the festivals for the music. I go to have a class time and mates. Like all, all the best things that happen at festivals aren't at the gig. I don't remember watching anyone and going, wow, they were amazing. It's all the bit after the gig or before it and traveling about and stuff. I went to Leeds Fest once and uh, all the music had stopped and there was this rave like in the woods. And uh, so we're on the way to this rave and my mate Darbo said, why don't you get in that wheelbarrow? So straight away, I, I was, obviously I'm getting in the wheelbarrow, of right? Of course I'm getting in the wheelbarrow. You're a man so, of honour. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> if he says do it, I'm doing <laughs> it, right? So I'll get him. It's Darbo, for God's sake. Yes, Darbo. He's, <laughs> he is genuinely the nicest man alive, apart from this one day. So um, I'm in the wheelbarrow, and then this bloke, I hear this bloke shout, Oi! That's my wheelbarrow! And Darbo says, Don't worry. I'm just going to push him really fast down this hill. So I went, what? And then this guy went, I'll help. So I went, what? So then all of a sudden, they've lifted me up and they're fucking levering it down this hill, right? And I'm like, I might die here. Like, I would genuinely thought I could die. And I'm fucked as well. Like, I'm, I've, I've got no control of anything. Are, where are, you, are your legs in or out? Uh, I'm out? sort of dangling out a bit, uh, but then I'm sort of tucked in because yeah. I'm, like, I'm definitely going to get hurt, right? Yeah, I'm tucking. So they... they so then they let go and I'm like, like cringing like that. And and I slid into a group of people, right? But I was I was fucking going at some speed. And all of a sudden I'm out of the wheelbarrow. I'm like, oh my God, I, f- I feel not bad. I, like, I don't think I'm actually that hurt. But then this bloke comes over, wanted to twat me because I've basically, I've smashed into his girlfriend, right? And like levered her. So I'm like, I didn't know they were going to push me. I didn't know they were going to push me. And I couldn't find anyone who'd, like any of my mates, they'd all gone. So what I'm going to do. So I got up. And I'm trying to apologise to this girl, but I'm fucked. I'm not very coherent. And I had half a, a calippo in my hand. <laughs> so I went, do you want this... Stressful cal- season. Yeah, do you want this calippo? <laughs> and she looked at me, she's crying around. Like, ah, she looked at me, she went, yeah. I took my calippo and I was like, fuck's sake. Oh, <laughs> no, no, no I'd calippo. get punched. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, then just walks away. But she was fu- I've got a video. Do you want to see oh, the video? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Okay. So here I am. <laughs> Should I see it again? So if you, if oh, you, oh, did you watch going at some speed? Yeah, 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 yeah. So there's me. There's my calippo. Someone else trying to get anything. Now, if you watch again, right? Darbo, my mate, is the guy in the grey. Watch him. See you later! Oh, <laughs> Just yeah, legs yeah, it! Yeah. That's a good escape, though. That's a good escape, that, innit? Do you know, speaking of wheelbarrows... <laughs> I've always wondered why. Why do they exist? 
What do you mean, why do they exist? To twat people at festivals? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I forgot to say, so, so the next day, I was like, oh, I'll, I'll Google to see if anyone tweeted about the wheelbarrow thing. So I searched wheelbarrow leads, and this girl, a tweet was, I'll find this and put it in as well. It was typical. <laughs> <laughs> I go to cliche Leeds. hack if anyone. <laughs> I go to Leeds Festival. I get run over by a <laughs> real bar, right? That's just so her. Yeah, so I was laughing about that. I followed her and I was like, "Oh, I'm so sorry about that." Like whatever. She basically had to miss her first week of uni because she like smashed her legs up really bad. Oh really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then ages after that, I won't be able to find this now, but I might put it in. Ages after that, I was on Twitter. And she, um, someone had said, what's the worst injury you've had at a festival? And she tweeted a picture of her legs. Her legs were just pure bruise, like the whole of her legs. She was fucked. Play it again. Because it was some speed, but I can't. It's imagine. an iron wheel, but I remember. Straight into them. Oh, fuck. She was in a bad, bad way. Oh, my God. And that's why I love festivals. <laughs> yeah, I've only been to one festival. Uh, which one was it? Trip Fest. Which one? Trip Fest. Trip Fest. Trib. Trib. Yeah. Oh, it was like a tribute festival? Yeah. They are pretty good. Not as good as real festivals. Yeah, because I was... Oh, that, I performed at a couple, but got off. Cause it was like... Who were you tributing? <laughs> yeah. Oh, Freddie Quinn. <laughs> seriously. Well, I told my mum, I'm uh, I'm doing Trip Fest. Is like, and she went, who am I? Who am I? Right, yeah. She thought the comedians did it as well. Oh, like, okay. No one yeah, yeah, yeah. actually thought that. Um, you could do a good Louis C.K. Yeah. Right. <laughs> got, got, not because they're on stage, but hotel rooms. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just come a wee pants around yeah, your ankles. Yeah, it's called Wank at an open spot. <laughs> um, yeah, so we, we did Trip Fest. Now, I'm saying McCallum Oakley, uh, very good friend of the pod and stuff, of our respective pods. <laughs> yeah. Not this pod yet. Maybe one day. He may be one day. Yeah, yeah. Bring some Indian Chris Poppadoms to call. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so I'm staying with him. I've got a pop-up tent and I managed somehow to put my tent up upside down. <laughs> so the roof was the floor. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I get how upside down works. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, what have you done that and then it blew away i went i don't understand how to do things like this you're yeah. gonna just have to do it and i the first night i stayed there got up oh, fucking steaming oh and i didn't bring any wellies or anything i just brought like treat like fucking gazelles or something yeah and he went no there's a shop that sells wellies and he goes i went these are all girls wellies he went no no they're unisex I went, no they're not though are they he went lad do you swear to you like, butterflies and fairies on him yeah I've seen loads of lads wear him. So he's just gone to the shopkeeper. He went, aren't these unisex? And he went, yeah, yeah, fine. So I put them on. And as soon as I bought them, put them on. Can't, can't believe you're wearing girls' wellies. <laughs> oh. So I'm cutting them out in fucking women's wellies or whatever. Pre-Sam Smith as well. <laughs> um, and we uh, oh, was there with my mate, Colin, who's a promoter, comedy promoter. And all he kept saying at the tribute bands, because it is a bit cringer, um, he just kept saying, play one we know. <laughs> uh, play Pinball Wizard, just to show everyone's the who will ever sing that. Just play Pinball Wizard, play one we know. Um, uh, and at the evening, um, the uh, this big fucking like, outdoor headline or whatever, and then after him, oh, it was Elvis. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, and then uh, after Elvis come on, these uh, producers come on. There was filming a film about a band. Yeah. So they're using it for cutaways for their, you know, right, all the yeah, crowd yeah. just cutaways. So like, right after three, I want you all to chit. So they're doing a couple takes of the band coming out for the first time. Yeah. Band coming out for the wrong core, et cetera, et cetera. We're just heckling them to fuck, ruining every take. Yeah. So yeah, like, yeah. This is shit. <laughs> <laughs> We want our money back. <laughs> just so bad. Just so bad. You don't deserve the girl that's obviously in the film. Yeah, so just shit like that. Just ruining the show. She keeps getting cut. <laughs> it was so funny, right? Um, so we, uh, they do all their cutaways and stuff. Then we go to the indoor tent where they've got, right, this is one of the, one of the moments where I can't believe no one else is with me to share it. Oh, uh, yeah. Because... 
someone said something so funny and perfectly comically timed without meaning to. Yeah. It was just pure perfection. And if you say that in a sitcom, you think that's too teed up. Right. Do you know what I mean? Right. So we go and see. I'm going to tell you four words now what we went to see. Okay. Right. Daft Punk tribute oh, band. Oh my god! I was gonna. I was waiting for you to finish the story. I was gonna say I've seen a Daft Punk right. tribute act. Right. So I saw this Daft Punk tribute act. Easiest job in showbiz. Yeah. Right. They just got masks on. Yeah. <laughs> playing play on a laptop. Whatever. Yeah. Dancing about. It's a good night. I've it's seen a, him. Yeah. It's a good laugh. Right. Anyway, I was going to tell you a secret about them. Right. So then we finish Daft Punk. We go back out. They're still doing cutaways on stage. Yeah. Of like close ups of the guitar riffs and the drummer and yeah, stuff yeah. like that. And we're walking past, just me, Callum, and Colin left. And we walk up to the front and we start just taking the piss, like yeah. waving, slow waving. And the producer, the director, producer, like, oh, all right, lads, nice one, nice one. And oh, you do us a favor, mate, will you just take a picture of us all on stage? Like, you yeah. know, we've had a laugh. We, we, they took every insult, like, really well. And uh, <laughs> he went, yeah, Colin went, uh, oh, do you, want, you want a photo, do you? So Colin took his bag off, ready, and he just went, fuck off. <laughs> So why are you so aggressive? It was so unnecessary. I was falling about. Just, and they just went, why? <laughs> <laughs> it was so needless. <laughs> anyway, so that was, the, that was the last night. Sunday, absolutely fucking raging angle, as you yeah. can imagine. Fucked. Uh, we couldn't get any drugs eggs. It was like a family festival, so we were yeah. just get doing poppers. Yeah. So I was just like, oh, this is fucking great. <laughs> doing poppers, watching fucking Elvis. <laughs> A Daft Punk tribute act. So anyway, the organiser of the whole festival was... Because I did the comedy tent there. Uh, so I was speaking to him. I, like, it was just Sunday afternoon. So, oh, yes. another thing that happened on the Sunday. They had an Oasis one. Um, Liam and Noel had a staged argument on stage. <laughs> like, <laughs> Liam, green. Liam went... Um, no, no. Yeah, Liam went, this one's one of his. Launched a tambourine. Yeah. Stormed off. It was like just... About forty people in a park just going, just, just like it, yeah, just had no impact whatsoever. <laughs> but this one's one of his. It's just like kids in prams at rocks. <laughs> it's like all right, mate. No one's even paying attention. People eating butties. Like, yeah, what? <laughs> yeah. No, what did he say? No one's bothered at all. <laughs> I'm just surprised how low down they were. Do you know what I mean? Like Oasis yeah. had spent to headline one of the nights, but it was Sunday afternoon fodder. Um, Anyway, I'm just chatting to the guy at the back. Have you had a good time, Jane? went, yeah, it was all right. You know, it was a decent laugh and that. Piss went, oh, if you think this guy's passionate about tribute bands. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. So I went, oh, well, we went in the, uh, the inside bit for a Daft Punk tribute band. And he went, oh, yeah, they're great, aren't they? They're great. I like, said the name George and Ryan or whatever. I went, yeah, I went, so I just joked. went, yeah, easiest job in showbiz, that, though, isn't it? Put out Daft Punk tribute, man. Put an helmet on, press play. He went, without any layer of humour, he just went, oh, no, they double up as the pet shop boys. <laughs> <laughs> it was so funny. I actually knew that as well. Did you know yeah, that? I actually knew that, oh, yeah. so I saw him at first, which I couldn't believe that that was a real thing. But the worst thing is, I saw the pet shop boys as well, and they were wor- They were so bad. Yeah, they're yeah. such a bad version of the pet shop boys. They are, they're all right, tribute, fe- um, tribute bands, as long as... It's got to be a band that everyone knows the words to. Oh, yeah. It's got to be sing-along stuff. Yeah. Because, like, I know there's some people who like the Pet Shop Boys, but, like, there's, they're not, like, massively no, mainstream no, no, no. that everyone knows the songs. You know what I mean? Whereas, like, The Killers. Or yeah, the Oasis, yeah. You watch them and you sing along. It's good. Yeah, I've been, I've been a few tribute festivals, all right? I, went, I used to go to V Festival every year. My mate used to work there, so he used to get free tickets. And um, we had... Uh, Basically, my mate, um, we used to sleep in our cars because we got um, we'd, we'd go in the VIP car park because we got these VIP tickets. And my mate um, pissed on his own door handle. <laughs> he could have pissed anywhere in this field. He pissed on his own door handle. This is on the first. Was a mark of territory? I don't know. He's a fucking. He's one of my best friends in the world, but he is in, and in, a very strange man. Anyway, he pissed on his door handle. So then we said, right. That's the toilet then, I suppose. So we pissed on every bit of his car. So we pissed on the roof, pissed on the windscreen, every bit, right? And on the last day he fell asleep, I'm going to make Gaz in a moment of absolute genius, pissed in a pint cup and poured it in his window wiper fluid, right? And we didn't tell him about oh, it. Oh, my God. So then about, 
don't know, I think it's like a month or maybe two months later, he co- he drives to the pub and gives one of the lads a lift. And the lad comes to the pub and goes, his car stinks now, you know, it really stinks. And he still has no idea what it is. So he comes in the pub and we go, hey, your car's a bit stinky, car. And he's like, yeah, yeah, I don't know, I don't know what it is. I've got, 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 got no idea. My mate Dobbo's a mechanic. He says, I'll sort it out for you, mate. So he sits in the uh, driver's side. He says, you stand there, mate. And just sprays the window wiper fluid all over him. Oh, it's piss! It's oh, piss! You've no. got me! It was such a long-term prank that was so good. That was a great payoff. It was so good, that one. And then uh, I think that maybe the next year, he had a different car. Then. He had his brother. I think his brother's car or something. Me and my mate were in a van. And uh, they had this uh, chocolate bar that melted, right? And it looked exactly like a shit. Like, it, it was indistinguishable. It was perfect. So poured some water on him, mate. I mean, it, it was so Clear. it was so perfectly shit like, right? And I put it on his bonnet, <laughs> and then I got two shoes and put footprints either side. Got a bit of tissue, wiped some chocolate, and put it next to it. So it really looked like someone had gone gone had a shit on his car. But then we were off from the festival for a few hours, so no one was going to come back for ages. Four or five hours later, finally we all go back. And like, oh yeah, I forgot I did that. <laughs> I completely forgot. So everyone's going, oh, I'm fucking losing their minds. Someone shit on this car. So I said to him, mate, how much would you give him if I ate that? And he went, 20 quid. Went, oh. <laughs> it's a big payoff. And that's what festivals are for. Uh, eating uh, fake shit and uh, covering your mate in piss. <laughs> See, book is the perfect accompaniment to that. <laughs> and telling directors to fuck off. <laughs> yeah, yeah oh, it's so funny, that. That's what I mean, the best bits about the festivals, though, they're just always the stories and the stupid shit you get on Yeah, but it's, I mean, festivals are good after the fact. Yeah. It's being in it, do you know what I mean? Sleeping in tents. I can't stand fucking outdoors, camping and all that stuff. Oh, see, I don't mind it. I, I like... just think you need to grow up, mate. <laughs> the brick came after mud for a reason. <laughs> it I... was a bit of a novelty, though, innit? No, it's shit, though. Yeah, it is a bit shit. I but... Think for... but you put up with it for the festival and for the fun of, it, of that bit. I don't think the, the, the negatives just completely outweigh the positives for me. Oh, okay. Like having a kid... Well, it might do something funny, but it's 17 years of crippling debt and it, it's, headaches. Yeah, you're living in shit, very much like camping. Do you know what I mean? I just, yeah. I just, no, there's no, there's no thing. I don't love music enough for, for, for it to justify it. Yeah, I don't love music enough, but I do love fun. Yeah, but go to a roller coaster. <laughs> go to a roller coaster. <laughs> a roller coaster. <laughs> just going over and over again. Just go on one roller coaster. No, the, 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 the fun you have at a festival and the story, and... You know what the best bit about a festival is? is you go in a big group and you go off and you and you split up into little groups and you do mad stupid shit because you're all fucking off your head or whatever. And you do ridiculous things and then you find and then you see your mates a couple of hours later and you go, ah and you tell each other stories straight away. Yeah, it's so good. I do love um I, just in general, not even at a festival, it's a perfect place for it. Is bumping into someone on after the same night out. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I've done it before because I'm a... Well, well, when I used to go out all the time, like clubs and stuff, I live the quiet life now, don't you? Yeah, oh yeah. yeah. I was very much curl up with a good book, rally <laughs> fire. I'm actually reading a book at the moment. Are you? Yeah, the grown ups, the Clifton Chronicles. Oh, is this the one Jonathan about Archer? Yeah, the choir. Yeah, oh, yeah. Right, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. got. I mean, at that point, I was a couple of chapters in. Very minimal choir stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was going to be real. <laughs> The uh, crux of the story. The real spine of the story was very quiet related, and uh, it really it was just a setup for right. for other plot. No lines. spoilers for everyone who's re- reading along. Yeah, but maybe uh, that could be our next podcast. We read along with the, the choir book. But it touches on um, kids. D- well, different themes: uh, male ego, uh, the class system, yeah, and there's a bit of incest. All oh, right, nice. He falls in love with his sister. Who he, he's like he's. He don't know he was real. Well, he don't. He, he thinks his real dad died in the war, yeah. but he didn't. He died in the hull of a submarine, right. <laughs> in a boat. He said he died. He died shipbuilding, okay. and the owners of the shipbuilders are like, "Yeah, we can get him out, but it's going to cost you loads of money. It's going to be further delays on the Canadian contract." Right. And the boss is like, "Meh, meh," yeah, and uh, let's just lets him, war. just lets him die. Oh. And the boss is actually this kid's dad. So this cat, this right. kid's been told. All through his life, like his dad died in the war, he actually didn't. He died, and then he falls in love with his biological sister. 
That happens a lot, doesn't it? Mm. Like that's a big thing with incest. When when you'd be into them, though, wouldn't you? Well, the theory is right that if when you're a kid, you always argue with your siblings, and it's so that you've always got this ingrained in you that you argue, so you don't fuck them when you're a grown up. But if you meet when you're grown up, it's like a really high percentage that starts it's a good shagging. Connection, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Plus, you, plus you like you're gonna look like them a bit, aren't you? And people are attracted to what they look like, and you're gonna be like. You're probably going to be the same level. There's very rare, rare there's a sibling there where one's a 10 and one's a, like, three. Yeah, true. There's only usually, like, maybe a couple, like, seven Plus and a nine. Plus, whatever. genetic, though. Some parts of your genetics must be, like, I like faulty towers. Yeah. So that's fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I like faulty towers. I come from a long line of people who like faulty towers. Genetically speaking. <laughs> DNA. If you go far back enough, Even, there's a king in England that really likes faulty towers. <laughs> no, well, like back in Neanderthal times, yeah, yeah. there would be a, one guy who liked faulty towers. <laughs> there'd be a Neanderthal um, from a different tribe who's yeah. come to a tribe to try and earn more money, and he's hit him on the head, <laughs> and the other people found it hilarious. <laughs> That's just filtered down. To one it. of them invented the wheel, the other one hit it with a stick. <laughs> Uh, uh, so yeah, it's a good romantic part. It's one of my first eight questions. <laughs> um, what are your thoughts on incest? Well, the thing is, I I got didn't get shit for it, but I sort of let slip. I like people who smell like my mum's washing. Right. Okay. Yeah. Just like mum smell, so like musk. Yeah, yeah. I find it really attractive in girls. I don't like girls who smell nice, really. Yeah, I'm not a big. Perfume or aftershave yeah, guy. Yeah, I don't like perfume. I like yeah. smelly. I like smelly women. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, like, Lauren. <laughs> I like smelly women. You like faulty toes. <laughs> and daft punching big bands. <laughs> Nothing I like more than just uh, a really smelly just woman. Tired for the day. <laughs> smelly woman by my side. Faulty towers on. And listen to the Daft Punk tribute, yeah. not the real one. Yeah, just the, just the tribute, and then followed by their Pet Shop Boys set. <laughs> I was at um, a festival once with my mate. I won't name him, but he definitely knows who he is if he's watching. And he, we were walking through the the security bit, right? And it, it was night time. He had sunglasses on. He was off his head. He was absolutely off his head. He's had a few pills. He had no top on, shorts, a big Russian hat. Covered in UV paint. Russian hat. Yeah, you know, like a, like a Russian hat, like a thing like that, like a big winter hat. Oh, with flaps. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. Alaskan. But it's summer. He's got shorts on. He's just wearing it. Prepared it's... for yeah. any scenario. It's just a crazy hat for a yeah, festival, yeah, right? Yeah. He look. He looks the most festival person. Covered in UV paint, and he's shouting, "I love drugs! I love drugs!" as loud as he can. And a police dog comes over to him and sits down, and a copper says, "Right, you're getting searched." And he said, "Why me?" <laughs> <laughs> Oh, wow. <laughs> it was also at the same festival. He spent, I'm not joking, an hour at this stall haggling with this guy to buy shit off him. He ended up coming away with a tutu and a badge. Just something stupid, anyway. And he rang his mum off his box at 4 a.m. His mum said, Hello? He went, Mum, I'm wearing a tutu. And put the phone down. <laughs> oh, I'll tell you when I got, when I was on pills on New Year's Eve. Met this girl called Iggy. Okay. That was a nickname. Right. Because and she looked like Iggy Pop? No. We, uh, this is... So Iggy the Dump? This is, <laughs> is it the smell that attracted you? <laughs> well, she found me. Uh, she went, oh, I'll just go over here and stuff. I went, and this never happened to me. This yeah. was just after my trail. But this is when I was big into... Coke and pills, and I was really skinny, and right, you yeah. know, I had like definition in my face and stuff. It's such good for your looks. Doing drugs. <laughs> if you're gonna take one thing away from this episode, oh god, drugs are a great way to lose weight. Yeah, to lose that excess crisp fat. That's what you do. <laughs> Put the C book down. Get a bag in of coke. <laughs> I just had that coke gleam. Yeah, yeah. The proper into it. It's a dance rate. You just. Yeah, yeah, sweat all off, and you can't eat the next day. So you're too depressed. Yeah, um, perfect for the you know <laughs> getting the summer body right. <laughs> festival, getting my festival body right. Yeah, Kate, Kate Moss chic. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, um, and she went, oh, I just noticed your 
no, it's just dancing about and that. Um, just what did you want to take my number and stuff? I'm like, oh yeah, fuck, this never happens to me. It's great. Yeah. I'm not that attractive. I mean, lovely girl. Yeah. Um. Anyway, I had her on get a number. I had her on Facebook, whatever it was, and she went, yeah. I, I and it turns out we had a mutual friend and blah blah. blah. And she said, uh, yeah, I couldn't kiss you on that night. I wanted to, but I've got this really serious mucus infection. I was just like, ugh. And all I just thought of was mucus every time yeah. I see her. Um, but I was, I was just, I was a bit like, I didn't really fancy her, but, you know, I didn't I didn't have the, I, you know, I don't think I could ever sack someone, do you know what I mean? I just yeah. didn't have that. Like, you don't want to let her down. I didn't want to, like, be rude and say, so yeah. I just led her on. <laughs> <laughs> just hurt her more in the long run. Oh, uh, so I went out New Year's Eve with Fion. Um, you know him on my, off my podcast, absolute fucking balloon. Um, absolute just pilled MDMA up and stuff. I just fall in love. I I'm so romantic on pills. Yeah. yeah. So she was working in Mackey's on Oxford Road New Year's Eve, and I said, "I'm going to come in." Uh, when does your shift finish? She said, finish at six. I'm going to come in at six. I want to jump over the counter and kiss you in front of all your colleagues. And, that. and she's shown all the colleagues. Got yeah. all excited. Got like, oh, my God, man. You know, my night shine arm was good <laughs> for all this. Like officer and a gentleman. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're going to come <laughs> in and pick her up and take her yeah, out. Yeah. Take the stars off her. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, anyway, we, I, I from that New Year's Eve, I got in on the third just stayed out in town. Yeah. Casinos, loads yeah. and loads of drugs. It was unbelievable. Sick night out. It's a classic New Year's Eve. Oh, day to come chaos. Um, and she went, oh, you didn't... And then I was like, in a mode of, you know, when you, you sort of dip. Mm. Well, I was in the middle of a dip before needing to get picked up again. Uh, I have a bit of an existential crisis. She went, oh, you didn't come in and, you didn't come and see me. I'm like, oh shit! What? And then read back the text, and you're like, "Oh, uh, I'm melting!" Mate's taking the piss out of me. I'm melting. <laughs> and I went, "How? How do I get out of this? Because I can't hurt her." Yeah. So I don't. I don't want to be mean. Do you know what I mean? And she went. I told. She stayed there till seven, like an hour after a shift for me. No. All the mates are like, she "Stay till breakfast." Yeah. <laughs> all, all the mates are on tensor hooks. Are like, yeah. And I. I said to him, like, how do I get out of this? Oh, you just got to be honest, mate. So I went, oh, sorry, I didn't. I don't really like you. I was just off my tits on MDMA. But that comes across so cold. <laughs> oh, you do it? Yeah, a bit, yeah. I was like, oh, I didn't mean it like that. And then, oh, and then I just it went, oh, oh, my God. It was the worst I've ever felt in my life. <laughs> so sorry, Iggs. <laughs> felt so bad. Wait until seven to see me. Oh. That is... And then... I suppose she, what, she just had a double egg McMuffin and <laughs> cried herself to sleep. <laughs> oh, you stop doing it. I've got a mate. I'm not, again, I'm not going to name him, but I'm going to read out this message. Let me just get this up. This is how we do Oh, it. my God. There's another one. There's another girl. Because I just used to be drunk thumbs. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I go back, see it a couple of times. And... Uh, and again, it's like internal monologue coming out from your thumbs. The first message I put, it's like a, like, are you still up sort of thing, you out. Yeah. But I preface it with, Christ, are you still up? <laughs> Christ, are you still up? <laughs> did it get a positive response? It did not get a positive response. <laughs> what do you mean, Christ? <laughs> For fuck's sake. Are you still up? You should have put a you. Oh, no. It was so bad. These were all nine, ten years ago. It was f- but a fucking naivety of youth. What do you think would make a good dumping crisp? <laughs> oh, a dump. What would I consult? Me being dumped. Either. I mean, what would you pick to do the dumping and what would you like to receive? I'd pick something really fancy bagged. Sensations. Yeah. Rosemary and Time. Yeah, 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 yeah. But then again, is that a waste of money because you're never going to see her again? No, because I, I bought her. It depends on what I'm dumping her for. Yeah. If she's cheated on me, do you know what I mean? She's getting a fucking tom tom at her head. 
I mean, we've already established that what's it to the single man, Chris? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I've got another what's on her. Yeah. So if you're getting dumped, you want some what's it? Yeah. If you're doing the dumping, it's snacker jacks because I'm dumping you because you're too fat. Oh, <laughs> yeah. You can't do that. You can't give a healthy Chris. Yeah. That... Or if they give you a fucking knickknack and say that's like your dick or something. Yeah. For my, uh... A single knickknack. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's not me, it's you. Here's one my, knickknack. <laughs> my, my girlfriend's, my, um, my pet name for my dick is Quaver. Right, okay. Because it stinks of cheese? Yeah, and curly. Right, okay. <laughs> so we just call it a little Quaver. But big Quaver. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh. Giant Quaver, if anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Novelty-sized yeah. Quaver, we call it. <laughs> you know them mascots, right? <laughs> it's like a person dressed as a mascot of a Quaver. That's what it is. Massive. Quinton the Quaver. <laughs> Quinton Fortune. Quinton Fortune. I love Quinton Fortune. Yes, 25. 25. One of my favourite ever players. He wasn't yeah. the best. No, we but tried I, on the left side. Yeah. Broke his leg against Liverpool, finished the game. Yeah. Love Quinton Fortune. The white kit. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I like that white kit. Yeah, Reversible one. Oh, was that the reversible? Yeah, there was a white one and it was gold on the, the white other side. And gold. Yeah, yeah. Proper Varon shirt. That was a Varon shirt. Van Nistelrooy. Oh, yeah. 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 Come on. We've slipped again. We've, yeah. slipped. Uh, <laughs> We've slipped again into United nostalgia. Oh, of course. Yeah. Like, did you see that Phil Neville clip? Yeah. yeah. That was so funny. Like, yeah, yeah. But he just slags. We just shouted to the reporter. Don't interrupt me. <laughs> Don't interrupt your fucking question. Sorry for the language. But then he's just. Because he, he's really. The guy's rude to him, so he has a go at him, but then he, he's like, ah, now I've got to be super polite now. Yeah, and he goes back oh. to me, and says, sorry, what was your question? Yeah, oh no. Poor I've filler. done that before, working in call centres and stuff, and I've really like been sarcastic with an answer, I've been yeah. right, and then proved to be wrong. It's fucking Oh, oh yeah, that is the worst, yeah. So, festival... <laughs> Festivals and crisps. What's That's a good crisp for a festival? You want something light, don't you? Yeah. I think hula hoops could be good. Fingers. <laughs> Wacky. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. I stupidly once took a load of crisps and bread to a festival saying, let's have a crisp butties. But we didn't have any butter. It was very dry. Your mouth is very dry at a festival. It was a terrible idea. Yeah, I'm not. I, I like a crisp butty with with ham, but I don't necessarily need butter. I have some sort of sauce, so to be fair. Yeah, it needs to be a bit wet. Yeah, you need a bit of uh, moistening the texture, don't you? Yeah, maybe needing the rain. Again, <laughs> Pringles, Pringles would be good because you can, you know, put it, cover it in UV paint. <laughs> Shelter, yeah. How big is this Pringles thing? There's glow- another mascot of it. Use was glow sticks. That's what I was going to say about yes. UV pick. You've got the biggest glow sticks going. Drums. Pringles are excellent festival crisps. They're, I think they're, they're, they're pop. Yeah. They're like, what? Use them as a microphone. Yeah. yeah. They're like, yeah, I'm a fucking Pringle. I think the Pringles tube will be useful in any situation. I wonder why they came up with that. It's a great idea. It's, yeah, it's a great market thing. Because if, if they were just bagged, I don't think Pringles would be a thing. No, no, no. They'd be terrible. Yeah, yeah you wouldn't eat them. They're, they're not structurally sound. No. And if they were in a bag, the job would just broken yeah, up anyway. Yeah, that's what I mean. They need a spine. Yeah, yeah. Maybe that's why they did it, to keep them all intact. Oh, that would be good. Spinal surgery. Do you know where you need a mould? <laughs> so they put your spine in a Pringles suit. <laughs> yeah, so now Pringles are so durable <laughs> that we're thinking about using them for surgery. Oh. You could use, you have a splint if you broke your leg. Yeah. yeah. I'd have... Also, I like the Pringle Man. I'm trying to think of what other Chris could make good body parts. Tom Toms for nipples. Yeah. Um, Monster Munch for hair. <laughs> <laughs> like Jello, like 13. <laughs> or earrings. Monster Munch would make good, like, earrings. Like, yeah. wacky earrings. Hula hoop for belly button. Or anus. <laughs> Any orifice, really. Any orifice. Knick-knack for fingers. Knick-knack for fingers, yeah. Um, French fry for... Yeah, fingers again. Chipstick dick. Chipstick for dick. Well, quaver for dick for you. Quaver for dick for me. Yeah. Um... A little chipstick and two tom-toms. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like faulty towers? <laughs> <laughs> 
Are you going into your Louis C.K. <laughs> tribute once again? <laughs> July 4th, <it's> always... <laughs> I love chip sticks. I have to do them ones. They're fun. Mm. Skips could be eyelids. <laughs> yeah. Now yeah. we're talking. Now we're talking. <laughs> um, eyes. Oh, Joe, you know what a great crisp. Oh, barbecue flavoured. What are they called? They like circle, like what's the pop, pop chips. No, no. they are like um, a sphere shape. It looks like they've got something in the middle, and the night it's just air, but it's great barbecue flavored. I don't know. Really dark brown bag. Don't know. Like Transformer crisps. Don't know. They're good to play with. Space Raiders are a good one. Yeah, as a head, famously. A, well, you could have them as a head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love space traders. I look. Do you know, it's a bit of a dying art. The ten p crisp, isn't it? Do you just get? Like, They're very expensive well, now. Space traders. Yeah, yeah, that's the sign of inflation for me. Yeah, that's yeah. my Nasdaq and. Yeah, most people go with Freddos, don't they? For yeah, know, space traders. No, guy. that's my Financial Times go. <laughs> <laughs> that's the sign of the times. Who is it? That one uh, one of the editors on Devon Talk was saying he wants to invest in Walkers. Because when weed becomes legalised, the sale of crisps is going to skyrocket. It's a good idea. I don't. I think weed um, consumers don't go for Walkers. So I think Walkers are a bit family friendly. Yeah, maybe. I can't, I can't imagine. I think like Rob, for example. Yeah. Just think of the weed person I know. Yeah. From Dead Men Talking. He, I think he th- would think, knowing how he thinks. Yeah. The two middle it, class. No, he would think Walker's is, you know, uh, the establishment trying to get him. Yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah. So he's going to go... Got some it. indie crisp. Yeah. <laughs> now, fuck that, man. I'm not doing that. i <laughs> Walker's. I'm going to go for these. That They're handmade by a monk from Mongolia. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that sounds good, though. Yeah, do you? Um, what crisp would you have for your body part? Let us know. Chipsticks for teeth. Chipsticks for teeth. Fangs. Yeah. Um, I think ch- chocolates are more a teeth thing. Aren't they? Well, you need them really small and thin to get in your teeth. Do, um, do you... Uh, do one sign I think of growing more mature? Right. Is like in ready salted chipsticks. Because yeah. they're all... They're so known for salt and vinegar. Yeah, yeah, Rightly yeah. Rightly so. yeah. Yeah, ready salted are the ones where you have when there are no salt and vinegar. Yeah, I know, but sometimes. But now you've grown up and you've. Oh, you've grown up, yeah. yeah. That is one sign of growing old, is you like you start to prefer plain crisp with it. Yeah, you're reading your choir book, eating your ready salted chip sticks. Faulty Towers just made Playing with your quaver. (laughs) Playing with my quaver. (laughs) Fucking me quaver. You've matured. Mascot sized quaver. You've, You've matured like a fine chip stick. Like a fine chipstick and a bottle of wine do you think chipstick for your dick is just because it sounds like dick yeah yeah absolutely they've got the branded spot on <laughs> shaped sort of dick size i've got a mate see i'm going for pringles tube again <laughs> <laughs> i've got a mate who's got a dick i'm not I won't name him um <laughs> it could be anyone <laughs> like a witch's finger it is okay. the worst dick in the world it looks like a dog chewed it and spat it out it's the worst dick in the world. It's knobbly. It's 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 how like when he goes to the toilet, I'm like, I have to stand next to you now because I just need to see this dick. That is unbelievable. Can you tell me off air who is? Do I know him? No, it's not a comedian. Oh, okay. No, it's someone from the pub. See, I've got a mate who's got the opposite thing. That his dick is so ridiculously big, like it's it's humongous, like it's insane. That I'm just constantly asking him to get it out, and he's just really annoyed by it now and won't get it out ever. Well, I will name him. His name is Mike. I won't know yeah. his surname. Yeah, I've seen some. Big... I um, <laughs> me and Cal Mokel have got similar sp- aesthetics. No, not colour, but <laughs> in penis. Uh, yeah. All right. So it's like an Indian quaver. Yeah. And someone walked in on us once when we was having a willy war in the pub <laughs> in the Urinals. <laughs> We sometimes go to the toilet and go, do you fancy Willy War? Yeah. And we go, one, two, three, four, I declare Willy War. And you have to pin each other's Willy down. So what's in on us? Fucking me. No, it's not gay. <laughs> we're just having a Willy War. No, we're not hard. 
I wish I could get a, yeah. get a, bit a big of advantage. In there. <laughs> a big advantage, yeah. <laughs> I was in Australia once, and um, uh, this guy. Uh, uh, no, sorry, I was I was having a piss, and I accidentally pissed on this guy, and he, he was like, "Oh, you just pissed on me." I was, I was pissed. I was like, "It's all right." You piss on me and then we're even. And so we did. But I was like, you pissed on me more. So then we just had this massive piss fight. This, this stranger, I'd never met him before. We had a piss fight. We were laughing our heads off. I mean, this, <laughs> this Australian guy just pissing on each other. And they went, right, see you later. And left and never never seen him ever again. Did you have a pint with him after that? No, that was that. That was the end. I love your rhinos. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can we do an extra episode of your rhinos? I love them, man. We'll do that as a special. We'll go and visit the best rhino. I just love a urinal chat, man. I love a really dirty rhino. Yeah. How are you in like how are you do you are you like where do you look? Do you look straight ahead? I I, I, I tend to just look at my phone. At your rhino. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I like to I like I, I'm a bit theatrical. I like I make a noise and I'm like, oh yeah. my dick's out. <laughs> oh. Have a look around, see what's going on. Yeah, yeah. I love a middle urinal and seeing. There's times when I can have a really good urinal chat with someone, but there's other times when I fucking hate it. If someone's too pissed and I'm sober, I hate it. Or if someone's like, hack. Like, oh, room for a little one? Fuck off. Oh, no, no, no. I like um, post-match analysis, Joe in the middle of Super Sunday. Yeah, like, half time. There's like 10 lads in yeah, the toilet. Yeah. Fucking hell, and he's the fucking bring him field and I'm just... I can't even believe he's still in me. <laughs> Shite. <laughs> anyway, see you later, mate. Yeah, yeah, tell me. Yeah, see you later. Never spoken to him before. <laughs> oh, I love your idols, man. Had... They are such good male bonding, man. Yeah, we had... Um, there's this pub outside where I used to work. It was like um, it's like an old shipping container. So it was like a temporary pub. And so they had like a little, really little toilet. It was, it was a unisex one, just one toilet. For some reason, me and my mate would go there after work every Friday, get absolutely levered. And every week, we'd go in and just piss all over the floor and thought it was dead funny. It was horrible looking back, but we, like, we just thought it was funny, right? We're very immature, but little stupid boys. Piss, though, inherently speaking, is hilarious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's well funny. It's yellow liquid that comes out your dick. Yeah, yeah, it's well That's funny. That's so funny. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> there was there was other pictures of celebrities on the wall, like frame pictures. So we'd get them piss on him and then put him back and stuff and we did this like three or four weeks in a row and then finally we were in the toilet I remember it's just one toilet and we had doof, doof, doof. I'm like, oh right okay we'll just say it was like this when we got here right we just who's doing coke as well <laughs> we just deny everything and we opened the door and it was the manager of the pub and she went you fucking pissed on this thing again this is the fourth time in four weeks and in my head I'm going right deny it and my mate straight away just sprinted as fast as he could so I'm like oh fuck and I was like it was him. <laughs> just blamed him. I was like, but obviously, obviously it was both of us. So anyway, what we didn't realise was that pub also ran the five-a-side league that we were about to win. Oh. So they were like, well, you, you, you're out of the league. Your team's gone. And we are like, so I had to write a letter to the pub, like, so apologising, saying we'll never do it again. Please let us play five-a-side. Sorry for pissing on fucking... <laughs> Shirley Bassey or whatever it was. Frank Bruno it was. Oh, was it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, he deserves more than that. He's had enough mental health problems. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so... We started, we started talking about toilets and... Mm, I tried to shit in the road once just to be laugh. <laughs> just... Because I needed a shit. I yeah. was walking home. Just in the middle of a residential. And I pulled... Took my pants off. And I wanted to... Do a running like a gymnast's land, <laughs> do that and shit, but couldn't get it out. So then, like, just straining, but I thought it'd just fall out naturally with a, with a big pirouette. So I did a big jump and wanted to land, and then shit just come out. That was the image I wanted to do. Right, I think we can do that <laughs> if we get enough people to subscribe to this YouTube channel. You're gonna do it. <laughs> 10,000 subscribers. Yeah. Oh, like... shit, on the street. <laughs> Is that what you want? Hashtag content. Is that what you want? Drink, cum, shit on the street. <laughs> it's inevitable. And eventually, there's going to be a point where you shit on the street for content. I know. It's just got to be done, on it? There's anything. So what's the lowest ever can go? It's like a character in Black Mirror. What else will you do? <laughs> He's already talking about 
crisps. I was like that in school. I was like, I was like that growing up. Sorry, I ate my mate sick. Did I tell you this? No. My mate threw up. I went, film this for you've been framed. I'm just like sick with a spoon from the floor. <laughs> I don't think they put that on you've been framed. <laughs> Lisa Riley going, oh, what are you this happens? <laughs> I um, I used to eat and drink really horrible things. I won a wasp eating competition, 10-9. Um, the, the, this brewery it was outside. Had a wasp. It was dead sunny. There was wasps everywhere. And basically, we, we got a load of pint glass and shook it up so they were dead. And my mate said, I dare you to eat one. I went, I'll eat one if you do. So we both ate one. And what did it taste of? Just nothing, really. It's, it's too small. It don't taste of anything. Did you swallow it or chew? Yeah, yeah, the whole thing, yeah, yeah. Did you chew? A bit in half, and then swallowed it in the, uh, the other half, and then after that, it was just... Did it not sting? No, no we, we took the stings out, to be fair. But then then the game was, you've got to catch and eat 10 wasps, first to 10 wins, and I won 10 now. I'm petrified of wasps. No, I'm... Oh, see, I'm not half so tiny. Uh, that day, right, I was getting so cocky about because honestly, there were so many wasps and like we were killing them in pint glasses and stuff and just like smashing them like because they're all pissed because they're at a brewery. And there was there was one on the table, and I got so cocky, I thought, I, if I put my hand over it like this, it'll probably just die of like suffocation or something. So I put my hand on it and it just stung me in the hand. Oh, it was the most obvious, oh yeah, of course that happened. Oh, I hate me. I've had a wasp chase me. Right, like, okay. like it's literally, it, I'm having you. <laughs> <laughs> Something on my finger. I, I attach it with abandonment as well. Well, the wasp was abandoned, are you? No, I it, psychologically, because my mum left me for a wasp. <laughs> <laughs> Not romantic. <though. laughs> Is that why your mum and dad split up? <laughs> yeah, yeah. He had a big, he had a bigger sting. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, I was in a park, still them Charlie, so about four or whatever. And um wasp comes there. I like it's the first time seeing a wasp drop. I mean, oh knowing the, the dangers yeah. that they uh, pose. Um my mum just screams and leaves me there. Just runs off, leaves yeah. me in the park on my own. So I just think this creature's so powerful that it can, it can take them a maternal instinct away. <laughs> so I've always been petrified of him. And then I've been stung. Yeah. And my gran just overreacted so much. She carried me like a fucking Saving Private Ryan. <laughs> you know, carrying me through all the... Like Tom Hanks with Bubba. <laughs> uh, fucking, what's he called? Lieutenant Dan. Yeah, Lieutenant Dan. Forrest Gump. Forrest yeah. Gump, yeah. yeah. So he's giving that fucking... I always get Tom Hanks. The big. <laughs> so you... Woody with Bubba. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Woody's carrying Wilson. <laughs> I got a farm, Wilson. And he's, it's very hard because he's riddled with AIDS. Yeah. <laughs> I love Forrest Gump. I love quoting Forrest Gump, mate. This is my favourite thing. Lieutenant Dan, I scream. <laughs> yeah, so my grand's running in with me. I'm, I'm thinking I've been shot. The yeah. way she's carried on. And she just goes in the cafe and she goes, quick, I need vinegar. <laughs> what? What? So then she's putting vinegar all over me. <laughs> You've gone, are we having chips? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is going on? So I'll just, because that's so early in your life, it's just ingrained in you to hate wasps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm not asked about wasps. I'm not, I'm not asked about eating or drinking anything. I do stupid shit. Yeah, no. My right. party trick, I used to do it for money when I was a teenager. Well, I just bet people that I could do it was just drinking piss. And it's not as anywhere near as bad as you'd think it'd be. Mm. It's just fine. I ate a sheep's eye once. That was just... It was a bit horrible. It popped, and that was horrible. Was it going in the middle? Yeah, I went to this... Uh, my dad did a fancy dress party where the theme was uh, be as offensive as you can. There was, like, no cameras allowed. And it was, like, 2010 or whatever. And um, the winner got a prize. And my dad went as a road traffic accident cop with, like... It looked like it was just human flesh in this thing. And part of it was there was eyeballs and they were at sheep's eyeballs. And on the way there, I was like, ah, my mates, my dad's mates are fucking mental. One of them's going to eat that. And honestly, within 10 minutes, I had a sheep's eye and half a heart. And I was just, it was well funny. Oh, what's the most offensive costume? Right. Oh, so the winner dressed, oh no, sorry. The third place dressed as Harvey Price. <laughs> right, dad, this is a white guy. Oh, Lord. Yeah, he blacked up. Have you seen that LR Shoe picture? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He put contact lenses in that went like the wrong way. He put a nappy on with all shit and piss and stuff. It was pretty bad. The winner was so bad, right? This was awful. So 
He dressed up as a Ku Klux Klan, right, and took a real black baby and dressed it as a slave. Where did he get the black baby so from? It was his nephew, and like he's obviously spoke to his mum and was like, "Is the kid's mum?" I was like, "Are you all right with this?" He's like, "Yeah, yeah, that's fine." And there was a vote, and they won. It was insane. That is some commitment. I mean, to be fair, it was by far the most offensive. He wanted to put a noose on it, but the mums was like, no, obviously you can't put a noose on my child. <laughs> got me all... <laughs> got me a prude. <laughs> my mate went as a paedophile and was, like, holding the baby. Like, oh. Yeah. I've seen a couple go as Ian and Myra. Ian Brady and Myra Hinley. Oh, ones. yeah, that'd be a bad one. Yeah. It was it was just when uh, Amy Winehouse had died, so there were loads of Amy Winehouse. There's like seven Amy Winehouses. A bit hot going it. Yeah. Recently, Dad slept. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I went as a I I forgot right to the last minute. So I went as a flasher. I just went over a big coat and I tied a dildo to me. I didn't have my dick out. <laughs> oh, that would have been better. I wanted to go as Madeline McCann. And my dad said I'd never speak to me again if I did. Why? I don't know because oh. there was way worse ones than that. I know what the fuck. Yeah. yeah. You can't host a. Thing. Yeah. That, she's like a go-to. Yeah, she'd not been dead that well. Dead, she'd not been missing that long. I think it was only a couple of years or maybe a year. Or two. Yeah, but yeah, so I didn't win. Well, Harvey Price is fine. Harvey Price is fine. Yeah. Questions morality there. Yeah. Questions moral compass. What would be the most offensive fancy dress you'd go as? Mm. Anyway, that's the last record. There is what? There is one more episode coming out. We've we've already recorded that. That was the first one we recorded. Well, uh, if you want more of. Seabrook, yeah, yeah, and, uh, the and other... this heavy crisp chat. <laughs> and if you're a crisp brand and you want to sponsor this, oh, we would actually love a sponsor, yeah, and we would actually love um, for you to tell us which crisps to go for because we're we're running out already. Oh, Joe, you know I need to find Brannigans, man. Oh, Brannigans are class. You don't see Brannigans like they had steak Brannigans, didn't they? Yeah, ham yeah. and ham and mustard and yeah, pickle yeah. one. Yeah. Oh, Brannigans are fire. I tell you what, if you've got some crisps and you want to send, don't send them here because I'm not giving my real address out. Send them to the Dead Men Talking address. It's 29 Lee Lane, BL67AY, I think. Yeah. Put for attention of crisp sessions, don't touch them, Freddie, you fat cunt. Yeah, please do that. But put Dead Men Talking on there as well, otherwise they just won't get there because no one will know what the fuck. Um, but other than that, yeah, thanks for Thanks for, for listening. Uh-huh. Um, Comment. I don't know what we fucking spoke about there. Daft Punk. Shitting, <laughs> shitting on the floor, drinking piss. Remember when we started this, we were like, let's make it just a really nice, lovely podcast. <laughs> we're not nice, lovely men, though. Yeah, that's true. We can't be what we're not. <laughs> <laughs> we can't be what we're not. Right, that's it. Thanks very much. See you later. Bye.